What is happening guys? Welcome back to Rule of Two Review, where today we're going to discuss the future of Super Smash Brothers. So I know this topic seems pretty random and out of nowhere, but in listening to a couple of podcasts and hearing some people discuss Super Smash Brothers over this last week or two with all the hype building up to the release of Bayonetta and Corrin on Smash Brothers, which, by the way, you should be seeing some gameplay of me playing as both of those characters right now. And just so you know, they are both freaking awesome. Love it. Getting us back into Smash Brothers it feels super awesome playing this game again. Both characters are great. So, with everyone kind of getting hyped about Smash again and discussing it, some of the questions people have been proposing around Smash Brothers, even most notably because of these weird rumors about Bandai Namco still working on another Smash Brothers for the Nintendo NX, um, it kind of has just got me thinking about where Smash Brothers really needs to go. When discussing the NX rumors, everyone is wondering, is this possibly a new Smash Brothers? But that takes too long to make, so is it just going to be a port of Smash Brothers for Wii U? And if it's a port, is it going to be a brand new game that only runs on the Wii U with like Game of the Year DLC content? Or would it be just backwards compatible and play Wii U discs? Or would they repackage it just for the NX and all these different things? As we discuss that stuff, it's got me thinking about Super Smash Brothers, like I said, and where the series really could and should go. So Smash Brothers is fantastic. We all love it. I love it to death. It's definitely one of the best series going in gaming right now. It's one of the most popular and successful series. Smash Brothers for Wii U is arguably the best. It's probably my favorite. Even though I have the fondest memories of Melee, I still probably have to say that, you know, Smash Brothers for Wii U is easily the most mechanically sound. And 3DS. That game doesn't get enough love anymore. I still go back and play it. I did buy all the DLC characters I've purchased on the Wii U. I've played them and purchased them on the 3DS. That game kicks ass. So the newest Smash Brothers, I think, is, you know, pretty much the best one. And so now it's like, okay, are they getting ready to port the same Smash Brothers over to the NX? Is the NX going to launch with some form of Smash Brothers, whether it's a new one or a port of the previous one? Here's the thing that here's here's what I've started to think about when hearing people discuss this and kind of running the ideas through my own head is what about the next Smash Brothers? The next time we get a true successor to Smash Brothers, a successor to Smash for Wii U and 3DS, which I don't think it's going to be this launch of Smash Brothers, if, if there's any truth to this rumor, I just don't think that it's going to be a new one. It's going to be some form of a port, maybe something where they take all the 3DS and Wii U content and put it into one package. That would actually be kind of cool, but anyway... Um, you know, if whenever we get this next true Smash Brothers, uh, what should it do? Are we at the point where maybe Smash Brothers might be have, might have run the gamut, I guess I could say, or maybe is out of ideas? When I think about a new Smash Brothers coming off of the wealth of content in Smash Wii U, the perfectly fine-tuned fighting system, all the strategy, um, an online network that, while still not perfect, is vastly improved from Brawl and definitely works well on both the 3DS and the Wii U. I think about all this stuff, crazy third-party content, so, you know, characters like Bayonetta and Ryu and Cloud and things that we thought we would never see in a Nintendo Smash Brothers. We've gotten to this point, they created all this single-player content, they created, like, uh, the Subspace Emissary and Brawl, you know, because they've kind of tried the story thing, they've worked with the Smash Run on the 3DS, they tried the board game thing with the Wii U version, which is probably the only thing of this newest Smash I don't like. It's like, it's like they've done so much, and they've tried so much, and at its core, Smash Brothers is, is supposed to still be just a fighting game, albeit a very unique one, but it's just a fighting game. So, you know, where does it go? What could Nintendo possibly do to make another Smash Brothers feel warranted? I think that's the whole, the whole thing that I think about is, I mean, if they're not going to do anything kind of significantly different for a fifth Smash, Smash Brothers game... Is there even a point? Is there a purpose to continuing the series as as a sequel, as in like a fifth Smash Brothers game, or do they just need to continually release content for Smash Brothers for Wii U, make some sort of ported version over to the NX, hopefully backwards compatible, so the one that we're playing today we can continue to play? Um, you know, I, I just don't know. And it's a very weird thing to think about because obviously for the, for monetary purposes and business purposes, you'd have to think that a fifth sequel Smash Brothers makes a lot of sense, which it, it does. It truly does because they would make so much money and it would help sell new consoles for the new system, whatever the NX turns out to be. And it makes a lot of money for Nintendo. And as a Nintendo fan, I certainly want that, but it's hard for me to justify what should go into a new Smash Brothers. So when thinking of some ideas for a brand new Smash Brothers, if Nintendo were ever to make a true sequel, which I'm pretty sure they will, um, it's tough, you know? I mean, a couple of things I could think of that would, you know, justify 
quote unquote, a brand new Smash Brothers game at some point in the future. Maybe like more single player content. I feel like that's something that Nintendo's always been working to try and to perfect with all of the Smash Brothers games. I happen to be of what I think is a pretty small minority of people who really liked Subspace Emissary. I thought it was a blast. Um, it definitely showed that the Smash Brothers fighting controls overall aren't very ideal for like a campaign and platforming and stuff like that. But did it work overall? Yes. I had a blast with it. It's a little long. I think that's the hardest thing about it. They'd probably want to maybe just sort of condense some of the ideas and maybe not try to introduce every single character on your roster into a into a story mode, which is what that did. Um, you know, so if they condensed it, yes, I think that there, there could be something there. I enjoyed Subspace Emissary, and even though the controls weren't ideal, I do think that there is something to be said for another single-player mode or a story mode like that in a future Smash Brothers. Um, one could argue that maybe they should make a game that's only that, and you're kind of getting into the territory of a completely different game where like Nintendo just took made like a Nintendo universe kind of thing, which actually would be pretty cool, you know, um, where it's just this huge adventure in the world of Nintendo set in the world of Nintendo um, that would just be like a like an adventure platforming kind of story game. Including it as a smaller side thing for, like, a future Smash Brothers. I think it would be cool if, like I said, they condensed what they tried to do with Subspace Emissary. Maybe created some sort of fine-tuned or different control scheme to use when playing through it. Because, like I said, Smash controls, the typical Smash controls, just don't work for platforming. But I think that would be cool. As a fan of Subspace Emissary, bring back something like that. That would be very neat. Now, on the 3DS Smash Brothers, they had Smash Run. And I gotta tell you guys, Smash Run is one of the best additions to Smash Brothers since the original game on the 64. I'm a huge fan of Smash Run. I am tragically disappointed it wasn't available in the Wii U version because the Smash Tour board game... Like I said, you guys, holy crap, so bad, so boring, not fun, waste of time, just doesn't work for Smash. Now, Smash Run was the best way yet that Nintendo had taken the core mechanics of the fighting element of Smash and put it into some platforming with unique levels and made it also competitive with other players. And it, it doesn't have a story, but it has motivation. Like, you know what you're doing, and then you get to, you know, make yourself make your character as great as possible, then fight other players. I really like Smash Run, and I think an evolved version of that for a future game would be really fantastic, kind of working on the offline content idea. You know, and then you think about changing rosters. Is that really going to make a difference? Would a brand new roster make a difference in a fifth Smash Brothers game? I mean, you 20 to 25 characters right off the bat, you can just check the boxes. They're going to be in it. They're the same characters that have been in the last four games so far. We know what characters, which Samuses, which Links, Mario, Luigi, Peach, all these characters, Pikachu, Jigglypuff. Uh, the Fire Emblem characters, Ike and Roy, like, we know all of the characters that are going to be there, Bowser, Ganondorf, Zelda, like, it's not going to surprise anybody, so you get the, the, the couple obvious characters out of the way, Nintendo has done, without question, a fantastic job with third-party content, Sonic, Snake, Bayonetta, Ryu, Cloud, I mean, it's insane some of the characters that they've been able to include. And yes, there are a lot more characters that they can work to get in as well. It's not like they've exhausted the potential pool of third-party characters. But my question is, does that even make a difference anymore? Would that make a difference and justify a brand new Smash Brothers game in the era of downloadable characters? What's to say that they have to create a brand new fifth game for $60 with very minimal improvements just to have characters that they've shown us with Smash for Wii U, they can just release downloadable for three or four bucks? Like, it's, it's the same principal idea. So while I want more characters, and I love the idea of them spanning more third-party characters, Mega Man, of course, hello, the other big one that got thrown in with Wii U, I love the idea of them expanding that stuff, but again, it doesn't necessarily justify a brand new game when a new game would come. Um, you know, and the only other thing that I could think of that I wanted to kind of bring up was the idea of a Smash Brothers crossover. So it's taking the idea of third-party characters and third-party elements in a Smash Brothers game and expanding upon it. So this, I think, could potentially be pretty cool and have a future. Um, I think, let's, I'm trying to think of an example. Let's say Smash Brothers and Final Fantasy, you know, building off of the idea of what Kingdom Hearts was. What if it was a Smash Brothers game using the Smash Brothers fighting mechanic and strategy, and your rosters and your levels included all the Nintendo Smash stuff, but instead of just Cloud and, like, one map for Cloud, what if it's a whole breadth, a whole plethora of Final Fantasy-related events, music, characters, items, weapons, a story mode that's maybe mixing what Subspace Emissary was and what a Final Fantasy-kind-of-related platforming story could be? 
What if they did something like that? What if they did something where it's like Smash Brothers and Disney, or even like, you know, a Nintendo cross Disney kind of thing with Smash Brothers fighting, where um, it might not even be called Smash Brothers. What if they made it something like, like a cross series, like Nintendo cross Disney, you know, or Smash Brothers cross Disney. I mean, hell, leave Smash in there because that's what we know it as. Smash Brothers cross Disney, which could also open the doors for things like Smash Brothers cross Marvel, or of course, Smash Brothers cross Star Wars. Now, you're getting into really weird territory when you start doing that, but the reason I even thought of it in the first place is Smash Brothers is meant to exist in a world where anything goes, and we can have Bayonetta standing on Hyrule Castle fighting Bowser, you know, and it's like that that literally exists with Cloud coming in to take the charge. Like, it's insane that these things can happen. Smash Brothers has created this wonderful vortex of nothingness that makes, that, that basically says anything goes, there are no rules. So Smash Brothers has already set that precedent. Now, what if you just elevated it from just a few characters, like I was saying, to a whole universe of games, like a Final Fantasy, like the Marvel Universe? I think there is a huge win there, and I think you can take stuff... Imagine, like, Spider-Man and Iron Man and Wolverine fighting the likes of Link or Mario or fucking Bayonetta. How crazy would that be? Smash Brothers and Nintendo has this magic to make things like that possible. The Star Wars thing, even as the biggest Star Wars fan in the world, that might be a little bit weird because there's just because I, I keep it so personal to me, my love for Star Wars. It's like, it feels weird to mix it with something like that, but I'm really just spitballing ideas. And with the Disney thing comes Marvel and Star Wars. So I figured I'd bring it up. But ultimately, those are the kinds of things uh, that may, that make me wonder how Smash Brothers could evolve. Something like a Smash Cross Final Fantasy or a Smash Cross Disney or Marvel, to me, those are true evolutions of Smash Brothers. The kinds of things that, whether it would be good or not, would actually potentially justify a brand new Smash Brothers. Because that's the whole thing that, that got this weird idea running around in my head is, gosh, why would they make another Smash Brothers? It's not that I don't want it, so don't anyone you know, lose their minds like Rob doesn't want Smash Brothers or like it. I want another Smash Brothers game, but what I want more than that is a reason for it to exist. So I'm hoping that that makes sense to you guys, is we need a justified reason for a fifth and sixth and seventh Smash Brothers to exist. At this point, we can download stages and characters and items all day long, so we don't necessarily need a new $60 game unless they do something vastly different, like a crazy story mode, single player offline content that really changes the game and something like crossing over universes just that's just an idea i'm not saying it should happen i'm not saying it will happen i don't even know if i necessarily want it to happen but they're they're ideas that make me think it could be worthwhile to explore so that's what's going on in this crazy random video that <clears throat> excuse me i just randomly like turned my microphone on. i was like i gotta i gotta bullshit with my peeps about some smash brothers and what's going on because i couldn't get this idea out of my head of, you know, with this NX rumor about a new Smash Brothers, if it's a brand new one, what would they possibly do to, to you know, justify a new Smash Brothers, like I've said a couple of times. So, anyway, that's what's going on. This is a very random video. I know I was kind of all over the place, but I really wanted to chat about it. So, tell me what you guys think. Does this make sense? Do you feel like there's a concern that a fifth Smash Brothers might not have a reason to exist? Do you think that it needs something drastic for an overhaul or an evolution, kind of like some of the ideas I suggested? Do you have different ideas that I didn't bring up? This was very randomly and quickly put together, you guys, my thoughts on this. So if you have other ideas that might be better than mine or make more sense, definitely please share that below. Or do you think I'm completely batshit crazy and none of this makes sense and Smash Brothers is fine just how it is? Share all that stuff below. Thank you, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule to Review, and I'll I'll catch you guys next time on another video.